Esports Trade Association and Esports Connected. I'm your host, Megan Van Petten. And today we're having Brandon Brunheimer from AVI SPL. Brandon is a solutions architect and he's here to talk today about some trends and what our new norm is looking like. Welcome, Brandon. Hey, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. We're happy to have you. So how are things going over there at AVI SPL for you? They're going great. Um, actually, as, as things start to develop and, and grow within the new norm, we'll call it, uh, technology is definitely diversifying on how we use it. And it's pretty much where I work. So it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun to watch that develop. Oh, for sure. So can you tell me a little bit about some of the trends that y'all are doing over there? Yeah, for sure. So I work in uh, specifically more so advanced visualization. So I deal with a lot of immersive technologies, VR, augmented reality, uh, which is also a huge developing application within esports. And uh, one of my segments directly is collegiate esports. So I get to start to develop and work with universities and high schools about how they're going to start to implement these new systems of esports applications within their student body, but also how you can diversify it and make it more than just a, an esports lab, giving it the capability to be full broadcast, being it the, the capability of a creatives lab, or um, you can even look at it as an influencer pod booth and things like that. So it's just become more of a dynamic solution, which has been a lot of fun and just different ways to be able to create those has been a lot of fun. Yeah, I would imagine. So do you guys have a showroom where people could fly out and come see their different options or how do you, how do you tell me about the process? Yeah. So usually what happens is we're, we are a small group within the organization of AVI SPL, which is the world's largest professional AV integrator. And one of the cool things is, is that we have specialized teams. So we have teams dedicated specifically to esports, teams de dedicated to experiential environments. Um, so it, it, it has that capability where we bring in different clients and the clients say, this is what I want. So then we point them in the right direction of which department they're going to want to go to. Um, mine specifically dealing with esports applications, anything advanced visualization. Um, one in case where you are located, the art of the merchantile building. So we were able to um, do the retrofit in that, but they come to us and say, Hey, this is kind of the concept. And then we kind of walk through the, the different capabilities and what their end goal looks like. You know, do you want a full competition arena? Do you want just a simple esports lab that has content creation capabilities? Um, we kind of go through the different processes of what that could look like, budgetary numbers, and then deliver a, you know, a solution that they'll be able to utilize. Uh, we do have a demo center here in Orlando where we have video walls. We have full 360 degrees of projection capabilities as you walk in, VR capabilities. Uh, we also have our headquarters in Tampa where we have different kinds of um, demo applications from projection and direct view LED. So we have them pretty much scattered all over. We have 46 offices across the United States now. Um, and then we have, I think, 14 outside of the United States. So we have plenty of coverage wherever, wherever we need to be. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about who your perfect um, client is, because I know that range is quite vast as well. Yeah. So our perfect clients, I would suggest are pretty anybody. And the reason I say that is because the, the solution on what we're creating, um, you know, we're definitely not the cheapest implementation, but we're definitely not the most expensive. But that being said, we're always willing to talk to different clients and individuals to discuss that we are the right appropriate design application for them. It may be much smaller to the point of where we could say, look, we could do that but you'd be better off doing this. But so I would say our perfect client is, is pretty much anybody who has a concept. And if they come to us, we'll either steer them in the right direction or we'll be able to work with them hand and foot all the way through their entire, from conception all the way through implementation. 
That's very interesting. Um, I know you're passionate about your job and I always enjoy talking to you and I know you serve in several associations including the esports trade association I'd love to hear you know why AVI SPL joined you yourself spearheaded that up and how you even got into this in the first place because it's it's you know this industry never sleeps so I you know how do you keep up with the trends and um you know it that was several questions so please go ahead and choose what you'd like to answer first sure sure so uh first off we joined esports trade association because we recognize the the community and if you're not involved in the community of esports then you're not really involved in esports um and what better way for an organization like ours to be involved in the esports trade association when we are in the trade of esports um, it may be a little bit of a different dynamic than developers or um, gamers, in fact, but we have a tiger team of 46 different individuals within our company spread across the entire United States that are gamers. Um, so it takes the whole different kind of application of us being involved in the esports trade association and truly allowing it to be a community. And I think that as we look at the different the differences with associations is it's pretty much when you look at social media and the associations and who you're related to and what groups you follow that's the esports trade association as well you're inside the community you're part of the group and as it starts to develop and build you're building relationships with friends and people that you'll be able to to lean on when you may not necessarily know um something you know a specific answer to a topic there's plenty of people here that have the, the, the knowledge that I may not have or vice versa that I can lean on and go to them and say, hey, I, I'm really having a hard time with this. Can you help me with, with this different application or this different kind of microphone setup or whatever it is? It's that camaraderie that allows us in the Esports Trade Association to feel free about not always worried about getting a... a a sales pitch. Like that's not what the purpose of this is. It's, it's that community. Right. I totally get that. I remember um, one of our last meetings that we had, you showed up as your avatar and that was really fun. So, I mean, I, I know that you really enjoy what you do and you stay ahead of the trends um, or, you know, you, you do your best to try sure. uh, as we all do. So what's your, what's your secret to success there? How do you stay you know, with what's hot, what's coming and, and, really you know, what, consult, consult. Yeah. Really what it comes down to is, is when you have clients that come to you with an end goal, like a result, um, you know, we have a current client right now that wants a completely immersive experience with touchless capabilities, but able to function as a PC and presentation as well. They also want to broadcast from it. So just allowing the, our clients to be free thinkers and come to us and say, this is what I want. Mm. So now it's my job to go and, and research and truly become one with the project and evaluate what they need from a tech perspective to deliver what they want. And I think that that's the best way to stay on top of the technology, because as you have clients that are forward thinkers or clients that are in technology that are already like, you know, we know this, but we want this. And that allows me to continue to definitely drive and learn more about what's coming out, what's new. Plus working for the largest AV integrator, we have the benefits of uh, some certain education with manufacturers and what they've got coming out and, and, and the preemptive applications. All right. Thank you. I have to ask, Solutions architect. I um, can we talk just about that? Yeah, what sure. is a solutions architect? Yeah, so a solutions architect from our company's perspective is 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 a consultant. So I get to go out and I get to travel the globe talking to different uh, different clients and potential clients about what we can provide for them. They tell me what they're looking for or what's broken in their system and then how can we upgrade it and make it better so giving the full capabilities to be able to 
turn around and give a solution to them, that's essentially what I'm doing. So I'm turning around, delivering a consultant decisions of solutions and being able to deliver an end result of what they want and what they expect. And it, it, you know, forgive me for not knowing, is this a degree? I mean, I know architects are, you know, some of the hardest working, most underpaid people in, in the, um, in the real estate industry, all the, you know, there's the, the, you know, the, the architect, you know, who they go to school for like five years and, you know, people, people are like, oh my God, an architect drawing is like $1,500, but the house is 5 million. Right. Yeah. So no, there's actually no degree specific to a solution that I do not have a specific degree to solutions architect. Mine is a much different circumstance. Um, but, uh, I went to the school of hard knocks. I was actually working on a cattle ranch in Florida and I was doing one-offs for show production for a while and I got asked to go on tour. So I decided to go on tour and then learned everything I could as I traveled the globe doing that. And it, it just exemplified and kept growing and growing and growing. And then I moved into corporate AV where I did shows for, for Pepsi, the white house, the Pentagon. I mean, I worked for so many different groups um, and bands and it just grew and grew and grew. And then I got married and my wife was like, you're still traveling so much. <laughs> so yeah. that changed when I moved to integration and was able to truly start to design the systems that I had been setting up and tearing down for years um, and just knew all the intricacies and knew what was going to break and the expectation of troubleshooting because you didn't have the latest and greatest and newest gear, um, which has kind of driven me to be more on top of the newest, latest and greatest because I've always been intrigued with that. Um, and some would say it's just a way for me to get off the ranch and, and, and kind of move on in life. But uh, it truly has been quite an adventure being able to uh, drive and deliver results for clients that are just excited to see what, they, what they've thought up and been able to deliver. And now here it is in front of them. Wow. I mean, thank you for sharing the journey of your what I would say is a prestigious career path. And um, I've been in events for 20 years. And, you know, it went from the AV guys working out of a closet to being, you know, front and center and respectable. And, you know, I just love these success stories. Um, uh, uh, it, it, that is really, really cool. Um, but I would imagine that you hung out also in Radio Shack. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Yeah. I, I mean, it was, I grew up in the era of Radio Shack and FYE. So, I mean, it was like <laughs> they were everywhere. And uh, just the, the idea, I play a lot of instruments. So I got to, I got to travel um, all over the world while I traveled with instruments and everything like that. So, I mean, technology has always been there. And it's right. always been a part, but it's just continued to grow. And as technology gets newer, you have to continue with it. Otherwise, you're going to fall behind. Right. Right. It's interesting to, um, for me, like being events and our event that we're having in September, you know, how we're going to enhance the experience. I can hardly wait. Um, just doing so many things that sometimes have been done and, and some are new, like as simple as video walls yep. and having, you know, having just all sorts of different, um, booths. Like you want to talk about what you're going to bring to our show a little. One of the, the things that we have the capability of doing with creating immersive technologies is also developing these environments within VR. Um, everybody who plays knows unity and unreal and how they play within the, the, the whole range of gaming. Um, but being able to take those solutions and from a corporate entity or a high school or um, a, a college, being able to implement surroundings. Uh, as we take esports, esports is, is so much more than just gaming. There's a whole application of broadcast and community and influencers and, and, and every kind of different application within esports creates this spider web. And what we're going to bring is the 
the immersive application. So being able to collaborative, uh, collaboratively talk to other students or be able to um, play gaming while immersed in a 360 degree dome. Uh, so we're going to emulate those, but we do them in a full scale, anywhere from uh, a single person pod all the way to 750 people in an arena. Um, so it gives you the full capability to take your entire first grade class on a virtual field trip to Serengeti, like those kinds of things, utilizing technology and making it interactive. So if you see a lion come up to you using laser sensors to walk up to it and gesture to it and watch it move and be able to interact with you, those are the things that we're bringing and delivering, um, on campuses. Wow. Um, so while wow, you talk a lot about students and some needs, you know, what, you know, how, where, where do the colleges start in, as they embark? As esports develops and becomes more of a dominant force on, on the campus, I mean, every student plays games. Even if they're the jocks or if they're the nerds, they're the ones programming it, it doesn't matter. I mean, everybody, you're a uh, female or male or whatever, Everybody plays games, if it's on their phone or wherever it is. The cool thing about esports is it's taking so many different um, different art applications and different applications with on the campus, whether it's a university, so maybe even different degree programs, and taking all of those and putting it into one community, content creation, being able to 3D build, being able to um, game in general, being able to broadcast, knowing what cameras, how to light things, how to stream things to the networks, whether it's YouTube or Twitch or whatever it is. The reality of it is, is it's taking all of these different facets and putting it into one pot. And that's, in my opinion, how esports is developing across campuses, is they're taking the diversification of what esports is and growing it across the entire platform of the student body to be able to diversify what the space looks like. And that's one of the biggest things that we tell universities because we get it. A lot of the older individuals that are running some of the establishments are like, why do we need a gaming lab? We have a computer lab. And it's like, it's so much more than that. It's, it's being able to be content creators. It's being able to be influencers. It's you know, camaraderie across the, the student body by playing sports and playing esports that they already play competitively against each other in their dorm rooms. Why not bring them on? And to the university's perspective, it's a revenue generator. I mean, that's huge for them. That's, that's justification in itself. Why not have a pod booth within your university that students can rent by the hour? Or, you know, have a, a gaming lab where you have a separate, you know, Overwatch team that wants to come in and be able to play it. Um, so it just allows for the technology that students may not regularly be able to use. Um, and it gives them the capability and availability to be able to utilize that technology. Yeah. So what do you think the biggest challenge is? What, you know, go ahead. Yeah. So I, th I think the biggest challenge is, is convincing the the people that write the checks that it's worth it um a lot of individuals don't really understand it but if you have an entire student body that's behind it it's a no-brainer um, right. and i think that that's probably one of the hardest things to convey that and then you know typically when they see a technology price tag there's a substantial number that comes to technology uh, and it's it's not because we are as integrators trying to make so much money. It's we as integrators are trying to deliver a customized product that sometimes takes customized equipment. And that being said, it, 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 you know, customized solutions always cost more. And I think that that's a very difficult part to convey to like high schools, you know, in colleges, there's a little bit more funding, but people need to also recognize that there's STEM money out there for these things. There's capabilities for, for investments to come in through government grants um, because you can utilize the, these labs as engineering labs or arts labs on top of what they're already being used for. These are some of the most powerful computers you can buy. 
they could do almost anything you want them to. So um, I think relaying that to, to the end users that may not necessarily understand is probably one of the hardest tasks. And that's understandable. I had somebody tell me the other day um, when they were making their pitch to the Chicago middle school um, and high school and college, you know, there's different professors that come in and they're like, we can definitely cure cancer. This is all we need. And then the other professor's like, I just need um, some gaming equipment. (laughs) So it's, yeah, it's a little tough to get. And that is the thing like that, that is tough. That's a hard conversation to have. Hey, I just want a bunch of, you know, laptops that have really pretty light up keys, uh, you know, and that's all they see. And it's so much more than that. It It is. It's, and you know, and you have the other professors that like, I will save lives. And, you know, and then we're coming in and saying, but this does save lives. <laughs> and, right. you know, we're finding out, you know, how much wellness is around all of this and we're doing research around it. And yeah, really, I, I, I um, you know, I'm honored to be part of the industry and the awareness um, that we're raising yeah, and we are just so happy to have you tell us a little bit more about you. I mean, I, I love your journey. It, it's a great story for our AV radio shack guys, you know, starting somewhere and, um, you know, yeah, I, so I, I mean, I, I, I went to, uh, I went to a small, uh, you know, a small college here in, in, uh, Kissimmee, Florida and, uh, got involved in technology, went on a couple college tours because I play a few instruments and um, then realized that I was better at the tech than I was playing the instruments. So mm-hmm. it just started to develop and um, it just grew and grew and grew. And yeah, I, I got onto a pretty decent tour with a girl by the name at the time she was Sweet Caroline. And uh, we toured with a couple of country artists and then I started doing bigger shows and bigger shows and it was, it was a blast. And, uh, you know, being integrated and involved in technology the entire time, obviously esports and what well, gaming at the time, I mean, gaming was always there. You would always travel, you'd be on a tour bus and there would be some kind of console, whether it was an N64 or PlayStation or whatever it was, there was something to pass the time. Um, And then as iPads became more relevant and everything like that, I mean, it just became so much more accessible and uh, yeah, I mean, the technology just never stopped and it just continues and continues and it's just so much fun. Uh, But now I get to travel, essentially I get to travel the world showing people what technology can do and how you can use it in, in such a different form, especially now with the whole COVID situation of, of the difference with hybrid solutions, being able to bring people in a room, multiple people in a room collectively together with people that cross the world and make them feel like they're all in the same room. And, you know, before you could get on a, a, a polycom or something like that, where you're talking, essentially it's a speakerphone. And then now you're getting floating heads and you're getting people sitting next to you and you're, you're getting these uh, virtual reality applications that are in full 360. So you don't have to have wearables anymore. Um, All the way down to, you know, some futuristic rides where they're starting to use augmented reality and themed attractions Uh, had the capability to be an engineer on quite a few of those uh, different themed attractions, being able to truly uh, deliver enjoyment through technology. Yeah, I can really hear that, you know, um, and it sounds like you've truly followed your passion. And I notice, you know, a lot of solution architects are AV or uh, um, also are musicians and love the arts. Here in Chicago, IT, IIT merged with Columbia, you know, so they're merging that technology and that art and it's yep. so exciting, you know, to see, and, and it's real. We need, we need both in this industry and probably, you know, in our, in our jobs or whatever we're doing in the future. Um, For sure. you know, <laughs> I remember when my grandfather, he was in his late eighties and he got a Yahoo email address and he always said, Megan, stay current. And I, 
always stay current. And I said, okay, grandpa, I was on my way out of town. And he said, Yahoo me. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. It was awesome. Well, and just thinking about like the concept, my daughters will never grow up knowing that as you're starting to dial into AOL, that if someone picks up the phone, there goes your connection. Like my daughters will never know what that feels like or what that sounds like, um, you know, or party lines or anything like that. It, technology has just come such a long way and that instant gratification of, uh, you know, and, and when it comes to like texting and, and phone calls, I would much rather pick up the phone and call than text. That's just me personally, but I know my generation is not that. And uh, mm-hmm. it's just so funny. Everybody's like, well, you didn't text me back. I'm like, just call me. I, I will nine times out of 10, unless I am busy, you will get a hold of me if you call me. But if you text me, I'm going to get back to you eventually. But, you know, my wife was going actually through my phone the other night and there were a couple of messages that I hadn't opened. And she's like, would you like me to open these? I said, no, 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 no. Those are reminders. <laughs> like, like, don't, don't open my text messages because if you do that, then they're going to be marked as red and I have not read them. <laughs> oh, that's actually, that's a good idea. I am um, um, over the weekends. I do text scrolling because when you're in on the move and you see something and then you've, before you know it, it gets buried. And, um, I feel so bad sometimes. And it's like, I saw it, I read it, but it was at a time where, you know, so that's a discipline though, not to look it's hard to look. Yeah. Well, and that's that's the other thing. Yeah. With like emails and stuff like that coming through, I have a specific folder that says work on today. And Mm -hmm. as, as I go through and I read through the emails at the beginning of the day, I dump them in that folder because then it's a reminder of, Hey, the rest of it's junk mail. This is probably something you should look at today. Um, And then I have a this week folder. So work on this week and then work on today. So it's just a technology organization. I'm just going to bring this up because we've been working together about a year, you remember, and you serve on um, a committee or two. Yeah. Um, And you, you know, you have a, you're in a pretty fast paced role and you have a, a very nice job with a very nice company. And you, I I really appreciate you sharing your tips and tricks to avoid burnout. And those are really good um, disciplines. Yeah. I I always know when I reach out to you, you will get back and you always do. And you're pretty consistent. Um, And I appreciate that. So I do also know that you're um, very athletic and you've done a lot in, um, in your training. So is that part of your discipline to stay? Well, it has um, to be, that's another drive of like technology. So I tinker with everything. So cycling has always been a huge part of my life. Um, I actually, up until 2020, I was a competitive triathlete and a competitive gravel cyclist and the regiment, uh, being able to develop that discipline is something that is, is a driving force. And it's just ingrained because otherwise I drop and miss so much. And then I'm harder on myself than I am anything else. So it's just difficult to be able to come back and say, Oh yeah, I did that hundred percent. Like that's not the scenario. If I'm, if I'm missing emails and I, if I falter or miss something and there are so many ways to utilize technology to be able to streamline that. And Sometimes I have to remember that I do have to slow down because the technology allows me to become so mechanic that sometimes I forget that there are okay tendencies to be able to steer a little left or steer a little right sometimes. And the fast paced application um, sometimes gets ahead of me and I forget those things, but being able to, to definitely regiment where I organize things and, and how I track things allows me to, to essentially deliver a better product for my clients. And we can use technology for that. Well, I mean, you and your company has been 
one of our earliest supporters. You personally have done so much for the Esports Trade Association and our industry. We can't thank you enough um, for everything that you've done. I'd love to hear some parting wisdom if you would be so generous to share because um, anybody, in my opinion, that's looking to do something conceptual and new or out of the box. Like the other day I was speaking to... um, to someone that built a bar in Chicago. Okay. And he said, you know what, Meg? I built a bar and then put a hotel under it. And it was just that out of the box thinking. And I thought- 100%. And it's amazing. Brilliant, right? Instead of a hotel with a cool bar. And that's like- yeah, I, I just definitely see you have to think out of the box with technology. Um, and some of the parting uh, thoughts that I would say is enjoy the environment. Um, and, and what I mean by that is enjoy the association, enjoy the groups that you're involved in to the fullest extent. And it doesn't have to be a sales pitch. And yeah, we're all working to make money and working to, to better ourselves in life. But in some circumstances, I feel like that's lost on associations because we are a community of individuals that just truly want to be in community with one another, talking about these realistic applications that we're dealing with and we don't need a sales pitch. Um, you know, a lot of times when we have calls uh, with the uh, ESTA, like there's, there's no sales pitches and that's great. Right. And I love yeah. that. And yeah, there's sponsorships for different, sure. uh, different events, morning coffee and, and that's appropriate. That's how it should be. But you know, nobody from another company is trying to pitch me something. And if they do, they, they reach out on LinkedIn and they say, Hey, I'd love to discuss this further and stuff like that. And I, I love that about it. And uh, yeah. so what I, what I mean by that is just truly enjoy the community. Yeah, there really isn't a race. Um, and we're, we're sharing, not selling and bringing right. each other up together. And I, I'm, I'm so glad, you know, and, and that's your style too. So there's, sure. there, there's two things I want to share. One, ABISPL does have a big surprise for us at the conference, September 12th through 15th, which we can't announce. And two, I think one day we should come to your showroom and do a member meetup. I, I'm I'm totally down. We will house anybody who wants to come down to the the great land of Mickey, and uh, we'll we'll have some fun. Yeah, that would be really neat. And if if you have something you would love to show here on the podcast, like send it over sure. because I have seen when you're at the office, um, and I've seen some cool things. And and actually, I couldn't tell a, a few times if that's your background, if that's your office, if that's your showroom. And yeah. I hadn't had the chance to ask, but you sure do have a lot of technology tricks up your sleeve that you can share. And, you know, <laughs> it's what we love to do. And, uh, you know, we do it really well for sure. And, and that's not, you know, that's not to toot our own horn, but we do, we do it very well and we enjoy doing it. And that's obvious. Thank you for being on Esports Connected. Absolutely. Brandon Brunheimer, nice Solutions Architect for AVI SPL. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, Brian.